So here's a quick video on how to use the UCSC Genome Browser, um, which was and is managed by uh, the group at the um, UCSC Genomics Institute, where a lot of the folks who did the original human genome sequence uh, work uh, today. So. Um, it's, an, it's a widely used tool. Uh, we're going to use the Genome Browser here. So we're going to click on this link, Genome Browser. And um, I want to take our results from uh, the script that we generated and use that to see how that compares to what actually exists in the human genome. So we're just going to look at the human genome. Um, you're going to want to make sure that this version is selected. Uh, then we'll go hit the Go button. Uh, the Genome Browser is basically an interface that allows you to look uh, across the human gen genome chromosomes. In this case, this is chromosome, the, the X chromosome that we've been looking at. And it shows you a bunch of different tracks. So a Tracy X chromosome is just a linear piece of DNA. Um, and then it'll present different types of information and their uh, interval locations along that piece of DNA. So starting over here, at position one and going all the way to the end of the chromosome, um, it'll lay out the location of different types of specific elements. And um, these we refer to all as tracks, each one of these. And what I'm going to do is show you how to import a track and then how to set it up so that we can identify the kinds of things that you might be interested in looking at. So first off, um, I'm just going to uh, add a custom track. So I hit this add custom track button and it takes me to this uh, uh, web page. I'm going to choose a file and the file I'm going to choose is going to be um, the whatever bed file that you created after you completed the parson problem in section parts one and two of the assignment. So I'm gonna select that bed file that you created then I'm going to submit it. And um, it's now going to upload the file. This can take a while, especially depending upon your, um, your, your web interface. So please keep in mind, uh, it might take a while to upload. It does track the upload speed down here at the bottom. And uh, we're just going to have to wait for this to upload on its own time. So after it's finished uploading, this page should launch. And you should have a user track here um, and so this is a track that you've now added to the genome browser so um, I'm just gonna click on a view in genome browser go and now what you'll see in this case is that um, we have all of our tracks here and here is the user track that you just added uh, notice there are a whole bunch of other tracks here. We don't really need to see all these tracks. So uh, I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to turn off a few of these. We're going to leave on base positioning, but let's hide the fixes, the alternative haplotypes. We'll just leave on the NCBI RefSeq, and I'm going to make it dense so that it's a little bit easier to see, um, to visualize. We don't need to see the omnim alleles. We don't need to see gene expression data. Um, don't need to see regulation data. I am going to leave some conservation data. So this shows you know, which sequences are actually conserved among multiple species. So I'm going to leave that on, but I'm going to put down a dent so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, I'm going to hide the variation, the SNPs, and then I am going to leave on uh, repeat masker. And I'll leave it full for the moment. So once you have these all selected, repeat masker, um, conservation dents, uh, ref seek dents, base position user track. Oh, and there's one more. I actually want to show GC percentage. And then the other one that I wanted to show was um, CPG islands. So it does have a place where there are predicted CPG islands, and that's down here in regulations, so we're going to show those as well.
All right, so we've got user track, base position dense, G GC percentage dense, CPG island show, conservation dense, and repeat master full. Then you'll just hit the refresh button and it'll uh, reload in everything as you'd like to see it. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of moving these around so you can move these around pretty easily just by dragging them up and down. And since um, user track is one of the ones that we're most interested in, I'm gonna put it in the middle so it's easiest to see. Um, and then I'm gonna put this uh, ref seek thing right next to it. Um, this is the conservation conserved sequences. I'm going to put this up here. So I've got my conserved sequences. I've got my GC percentage. Um, so I think I've got, got my CPG islands. So I think I have everything lined up how I wanted to. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, uh, you can zoom in and out. So notice that <coughs> the position I'm looking at right now is just 200 base pairs. So it's actually just kind of showing me the first thing in my track. If I wanted to look at a larger position, I can use, I can move back and forth along the chromosome using these arrows, or I can zoom in and out. So I'm going to zoom out, and I'm just going to zoom out by a factor of 100x. And you should be able to see some uh, some of these tracks a little bit better. You can also pull if you want, so you can pull to the left and the right, and that'll show you um, all these things as well. Now that we've gotten to this point, pull this one up here. So one of the interesting things, right, is now you can start to see where our predicted CPG islands might overlap with other genetic elements. And what I'd just like you to do is take a little bit of, to explore around and see what you think about the relationship between where we made predictions about CPG islands and their predictive role in the regulation of gene expression and where we actually see um, these other entities in the genome, whether it be conserved sequence or other predicted CPG islands. I think these are actually based on a 300 base pair uh, window instead of a 200 base pair window, um, where we see ref seq genes and where we see repetitive elements. And you can start to see where you know you might see our CPG islands predicted overlapping with other ones and where they don't overlap. Um, it might tell you something about how our process worked, if we, if you think we did a good job or a poor job. Now you can see how it overlaps with conserved sequences in some organisms. Um, we can look and see how it relates to where we see a darker level of um, GC percentage, right, which was something we might expect. And then we can also look to see where it overlaps with repetitive elements, and these are elements that don't code for DNA, but actually might be viral in origin. So do we see it overlapping with certain types of these repetitive elements? And you can zoom out even further. So that was a 20,000 base pair segment. Um, we can zoom out even farther and look for um, you know, 2 million bears, base pairs at a time. And here we can see, uh, you know, you, you, it's a little clearer now where the genes are um, and also where um, uh, some of the broader things are in, in this genome. So, you know, it might make sense to try to look at um, some specific regions. And so one of the regions that I think might be good to look at is examining a part of the chromosome where there's a little bit more um, detail. So we'll look at a, a few hundred thousand base, a couple hundred thousand base pairs um, in this section. So um, I think this is kind of a interesting section to look at. I just kind of picked it at random. I thought it might be interesting. And so what I'd like you to do is take a look at this section. You can zoom in or zoom out of it. Um, again, you're going to go from this po these positions, so about uh, on the X chromosome, if you just paste this location into this go box and hit go, it'll take you right there. Um, and, um, you know, you can, uh, I would say probably just to even it out, we'll say
from one mil from position one million three hundred and twenty eight thousand to one million four hundred and ninety five thousand. Right, this will be the region that we'll investigate. So what I want you to do is take a look at what we generated and how you would relate that to um, some of the other things that you might see on um, uh, that are already annotated on this genome as well. So particularly, I think it's interesting to look at how it relates, how these entities might overlap or not overlap with genes, overlap or not overlap with competitive elements, overlap or not overlap with other predicted locations of CPG islands, and what does that mean for the algorithmic approach that we took. So hope that helps you set up and answer part three of the assignment.